Hey guys, this is Alex. And this is Drew. And today on the Two Man Comic Book Club podcast, we're going to be carrying on with our Doctor Doom series from 2019 by Christopher Cantwell, Salvador La Roca, and Guru FX. Let's go. Excited to once again have Torrance with us. Yes. Excited. Back again. Yeah. Didn't get enough of this last time. Yeah, surprisingly so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to think of that laugh. Well, after... Uh, after having somebody in the room with you, you wonder like if they're just sitting there going, "These friggin' idiots yeah. don't know comic books. They don't um, know no things." Yeah, I mean, I did guess Care Bears <laughs> at the end of the last episode. You did. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> oh, uh, how's uh, how's it been? Um, it's been. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. What's happened since the last time? We're still... Oh, I'm going to mention this just because. Please. I've been... Uh, I go through, even though I make a podcast, I go through these uh, ebbs and flows of do I listen to music when I'm driving and do I listen to podcasts? And I'm back in the podcasts and I'm catching up with things. And I've been going through a whole lot of podcasts from like last week. February and March, oh. when the pandemic was just getting started and everybody's just talking, oh, like that's making, trippy. making yeah. just like being real lighthearted about it and be like, don't forget to wash your hands and be like, wash your hands for 20 seconds and all this stuff. And I'm just like, you don't even know. Right. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's basically what's been happening. Yeah. I, and that's, that's a weird little, uh, normally, you know, like I go back and mm-hmm. check out the back catalogs, but you don't think about a pandemic being overlaying how, over everything. How little. Like, it hasn't been that long. No. But to just to go back to February and March and hear people... Like, I was just thinking about... Like, I made a tweet early in 2020. Yeah. Because somebody was making some jerky comment about the music community. Mm-hmm. And, like, just bashing on somebody else. And I was like, can 2020 be the year that we support each other's artistic endeavors? Right. And we're just excellent to each other. And I just think, man, I was such a baby back then, you know, (laughs) asking for people just to be nice to each other. Mm -hmm. Little did you know. Yeah. And so there'll be none of that. That's what's been going on with me. I've been realizing what it remembering what it used to be like. Well, in order for me to answer that question, you have to ask me a A specific specific question. question. Yeah. I. I realize that's what you were getting. No, <laughs> no, no. Hey, Alex, what you been reading, yo? Oh, funny you should ask. I have been reading quite a few comics lately. So uh, if you listen to last episode, you remember I mentioned the whole reason I started listening, or sorry, listening, reading this Doctor Doom series is because the writer, Christopher Cantwell, is the current writer for the new Iron Man book that just came out. Um, I actually bought two wicked awesome variants um i'm gonna have to in our break go grab them so Mm -hmm. i can show you yeah uh actually i'll just have future alex throw these up on the screen right now um they are so cool they're two of my favorite covers of comic books and it isn't necessarily because this alex ross did do the covers and and in this series he actually designed the new iron man armor oh cool which is the inspiration for it is that the whole story, I haven't started reading it yet. I'll get to that in a second. He, Tony Stark is going back to his roots. He's like ripping tech out of his suits. He's going mm. way more basic. He's like trying to become way less robot. Um, and I think there's some deeper meaning into that as okay. well. Just like, you know, he's trying to become more human, more humane. Um, it looks like a really cool series. It's getting great reviews. I have issue one. I have two covers of it. I have not read it yet because I wanted to get like a full scope of where Iron Man's been over the years. Uh, yeah. um, I'm not going super far back, but I am going about five years back, which is still a lot of Iron that's Man. That's a lot to read. Yeah, that's well, that's about the most recent series I've read. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Riri Williams' Iron Heart would be the most recent stuff, and he's he's dead in an AI in that yeah. book. Spoiler mm-hmm. alert. Um, so trying to catch up with a ton of Iron Man right now. I'm reading Iron Man from 20, 
Let me look real quick. Why well, I have it right here? There's no reason I can't. Well, he's from looking, twenty. I'm guess. Oh, I was gonna guess. Go ahead. I haven't said it yet. I was gonna. I don't know. Twenty thirteen. Close. Twenty twelve. Uh, was it twenty twelve? It was twenty twelve. I told you. I, I can't it. believe yeah. you guessed that. I guessed it. That's amazing. I can <laughs> see for the podcast. I can just cut out the yeah. part if I wanted to. Yeah. And I um, really think I was smart. Here's a juicy tidbit of information. Tidbit. Tadbit. I've tidbit, always heard tidbit. Tid. tid. Cool tidbit of information about that 2012 if you guys want to read it. It's all in Marvel Unlimited, first off. Uh, we learn about a juicy bit of information about Tony Stark's origin that he may or may not have been purposefully designed at birth hmm. um, to do something great. And I'll leave it at that. And it's okay. something that I, as a pretty diehard Iron Man fan, didn't know about. Um, I had not read that, so very cool it's very good and it all apparently according to um what's this comic book herald which if you don't yeah, know what yeah. comic book herald is it's a really cool comic book resource that gives you great jumping on points for really anything every time i've thought i want to read this character that i've never read i've gone on there and found a great jumping on point um with issues and almost everything he points you towards is on marvel unlimited so you can actually find it and not have to hunt down floppies which for some of the older stuff is yeah. near impossible sometimes. Speaking of, I'm going to interrupt you for a Do second. Do it. Um, big news, DC Universe mm -hmm. ah, is changing. Because you said tons of comics. Like, I'm a big DC fan. And DC Universe was great because we had comics and original series. Mm -hmm. We just found out, I guess in January, it's shifting over. And their visual, not visual, everything's visual. Their, um, like, TV and movie content is moving to HBO Max, but they're going to bring a ton more comics. Yeah. And it's going to be DC Universe Infinite or Infinity. I can't. No, I think it's Infinite because it's not like Dunder Mifflin Infinities. <laughs> DC Universe Infinite. I wish it were yeah. Dunder Mifflin Infinity. Um, but yeah, they're supposed to have what sounds like a comparable amount to Marvel. Do you know how many are on Marvel right they now? They just crossed 27,000, I think. I thought I saw the number 24,000 okay, for yeah. DC, which. Is a game That'll changer. give you some yeah. reading for the John. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, I yeah. just wanted to mention that. You know, I don't know why they haven't. Like, yeah. what are they waiting for? Like, Th maybe hire a full team to find and restore yeah. and scan in all those comics because obviously. I'm wondering, I kind of wonder if they were waiting and they're like, we're just going to do something different. We don't want to just redo Marvel Unlimited. We want to do something different, give something, give people something that Marvel Unlimited didn't give them, didn't give them. And then apparently it hasn't panned out. Right. Well, I mean, it has in a sense that they're kind of breaking it into two things. Yeah. Um, I do think it is unfortunate sometimes how Warner Bros. handles the comics division of their things. Um, that's for another episode, I guess. Yeah. But HBO Max is getting all the DC media. Yeah. And so it makes there's going to be something much more akin to a, a DC's version of Marvel Unlimited, which I'm here for because it's not like there's a more. Uh, intense fan base for Marvel than there is DC. I yeah. feel like they're probably punch for punch just as big and there's a huge crossover. Yeah. People want to be able to go back and read those yeah. golden age comic books for mm -hmm. DC and now they have a place where they can truly do a deep dive. So I'm excited about that. Uh, anyway, full roundhouse. I've been reading a ton of Iron Man to get ready for the most recent Iron Man and uh, that's the majority of everything I've read. I mean, aside from catching up on or rereading rather these Doctor Doom mm -hmm. books just for this podcast um, I don't think anything else yeah. I'm trying to I'm, I'm deep enough into comic books Twitter now that I see all these retweets from these like uh, passion projects that these Marvel and DC care creators are putting out there in the world and there's so many that I retweet almost as like a bookmark for me to go back and mm -hmm. go okay what did I retweet mm -hmm. um, there's some really cool stuff just independent third party not big two mm -hmm. comic books that i really want to read that i need to branch off to but it had been so long since i've yeah. read my boy iron man that i had to jump in there anyway that's yeah. what i've been reading have you uh unfortunately you i got any what you've been reading yous no not other than dr doom because i realized I, I set a goal at the beginning of the year to read 20 books this year because my wife always does the Goodreads challenge, mm -hmm. and I never did. So I was like, let's just shoot for 20. And I was doing really good, but then I picked a couple really long books, and I realized that I have five left to go, and 
I'm not a fast reader, so I've been kind of like pivoting over to just actual like novels. Yeah. yeah. So I haven't I haven't read a lot of comics yet. Well, speaking lately. of, I know Tori just got access to Marvel Unlimited, but mm. you read quite a bit on your own as well, right? Like, have you been reading anything recently? Um, I was reading a uh, saga. Yeah. Ah. Uh, so you actually been on the comic runs at least recently? Yeah. How far into that are you? Um, I need. I, I still need to catch up. There's a lot that I haven't read, uh, but I've read the first several. I bet you're farther mm. than I am. I've only read like, I think the first book, not even the first volume, just the first book. Oh, I, don't, right. I don't even yeah. know if I've finished that. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks I, great though. Yeah, obviously, uh, anybody moderately aware of comic books know that Saga is one mm-hmm. of the the big titles out in the world, especially non DC mm-hmm. uh, Marvel books. That is. Almost certainly going to be covered on this podcast sooner yeah. than later, especially now that Tori's here. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. That's a that's a huge one that I forgot to catch up on. There's just not enough time in the day. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah there's just too much out there. It's the yeah. same thing as going to look on Netflix for something to watch, and then you just watch 40 trailers and then go to bed. I don't <laughs> even watch the trailers. I, yeah. I go through Netflix and I'm like, I want to watch that, but Holly doesn't. I want to watch that, but Holly doesn't. Holly <laughs> wants to watch that, but I don't. Yeah. Uh, let me check Hulu. Yeah. Same thing. Let me check in Amazon Prime. Same and thing. And you're tired. Yeah. Time for and bed. I'm just like, <sighs> what's on normal TV? That's right. Nothing. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a choice paralysis. Yeah. It's a real so you thing. just end up rewatching the same shows. That's how I rewatched Community, Parks and Rec, The Office, uh, all those things. Man. Cool. Well, uh, we're going to jump right into what we were talking about last time. So if you weren't listening last time you should definitely go back because we're in a doctor doom book that is killing so far Mm -hmm. uh we're here for it and that's not just from our side of all of our comic book twitter chris cantwell and his team got a lot of praise for this one so we're looking at doctor doom number two uh from 2019 the writer is christopher cantwell artist salvador la roca Color artist, Guru Effects, the letterer is VC's Corey Petit, and this specific cover is by ACO. We mentioned some of the other stuff in episode one if you want to go back and get the deeper credit, but I think those are the bulk of the guys that do the work on this book. So, Drew, if you were to give us a recap uh, quick, just kind (laughs) of for the people that are stubborn and won't go listen, Uh, uh, you should go back and listen, by the way. Uh, Watching on YouTube even better. Some of you might not know that this is on YouTube. Uh, also at Two Man Comic Book Club, mm-hmm. and we throw the panels up there. Um, not every single one, but a lot of them, just to kind of mm-hmm. get you a little more immersed in the subject. But yeah, you should also just check it out on Marvel Unlimited. Yes. But yeah, so um, what's a better way to start a comic series than to talk about how we're going to solve the world's energy, or not energy, uh, global, global warming, warming crisis by putting a black hole on the moon and that's where we're going to send all of our greenhouse gases. Great idea. Yeah. Um, so anyway, they're doing that, and Doctor Doom is on TV talking about how that's a bad idea, which I concur. Um, anyway, it seems like it's going okay, but then the the station on the moon explodes, and like right after that, a bunch of nukes fire off from Latveria. Latveria. Latver. Latveria. 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 <laughs> Latveri. It varies. varies. It varies. It varies. Yeah. yeah. Isn't he asked? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, le- uh, Doctor Doom's hometown, home yeah. country. Um, but he didn't send them, and basically everybody's out to go get him uh, the, to place him under arrest. Or, or n- that's kind of just the million, million mile view. Right. right. So, but we get to see a little bit. Oh, there's a. We see Kang. Kang drops in. Kang the Conqueror. Yeah. Time travel aficionado, uh, as we termed him last time, the quantum leap yeah. of the mm-hmm. Marvel Universe. Um, what else? Um, I feel like I literally said three things, and there no, had I to mean, be more than three things that happened in that book. I think if they want more of a deeper dive on what it is, then we did a podcast on it. Yeah. You should check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Something goes wrong. Doom gets uh, accused of it, even though he says it wasn't them. He says that they're going to surrender, and some people come, some bounty hunters come to try to uh, get him, and that's... Oh, and he's he's having visions of a parallel timeline 
or maybe the future. We don't know where he is healed. He's not a uh, not disfigured, not disfigured, and he's the world minister, and he's brought peace to the realm. Which Kang Conqueror referenced in yeah. some of his travels. So yeah, uh, usually Doom would definitely be. S- there's enough reason to justify pointing a finger at him for something so catastrophic happens. Mm-hmm. But for once, at least as far as we know, uh, it's either not his fault, it wasn't him, or he's really, they're doing some like trickery on a a wall-breaking level yeah. when the reader, what is that called when the reader knows something in... Uh, dramatic irony. Dramatic yes. irony, is that it? Yeah, some weird abstract dramatic irony if he did do it. Um Anyway, so this book starts off very similarly to what the first one did, and we are back in a newsroom, and all the news analysts and uh, anchors from a plethora of different countries are just talking about the event, and I'll just kind of read some of them. We have one that says 2,600 people are dead. All signs point to an unprovoked attack by Latveria and its leader, Dr. Victor Von Doom. Um, Then we have one from French talking about it. I always like it when they take the time to just say translate it from French just the story wouldn't necessarily suffer if they just had a variety of different things but it mm-hmm. does show that they are thinking about this in a much more worldly view like it's a small but mm-hmm. I always notice a little bit of representation that matters I think um, translated from French they're talking about the savage or the salvage efforts continuing continuing led by an international community of several uh, of Earth's heroes. They talk about Reed Richards being on there, trying to get rid of some of the stuff. And then one buddy, one buddy, I just said one buddy, not somebody. <laughs> yeah. Doom has surrendered. Uh, the superhumans will transfer him to a New York City, or to New York City, to await a trial by the UN International Criminal Tribunal. And then we pan to that very transfer of Dr. Doom that's happening. And they've taken off his mask, and he's thanking them because they covered up his face in a mask that actually looks very similar to the ones that everybody's wearing right yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, but it just shows you this is a this is another interesting peek into the mind of Doctor Doom. He says, "Thank you for covering my face," and just in that moment that he it feels sincere. Uh, mm-hmm. The art with the text it's it's not sarcasm. He really does cover his face for. Uh, for a, a more complex reason than just having a, a mask on as a supervillain. Mm-hmm. And then you switch to the next panel, and we have many more characters than we saw last time. So we do have Union Jack and Agent Zero, which are the two, uh, well, one's a mercenary, one is not, that tried to apprehend Doctor Doom at the very end of issue one. Um, then we have a special ops captain whose name is classified. I don't know who that is. Um, then we have Amy Chin, who I'm just going to read some of these descriptions of these characters just so you get an idea. She's a ninja wild pack member and under orders to kill Doom at any signs of trouble. You got to imagine somebody that has specific orders like that. They wouldn't send in there unless she was capable mm-hmm. of pulling off an order like that. Uh, she's kind of the one holding him like he's handcuffed. She's got his hand on his back. And then we have Herbie, who I've seen a little bit of. He's an android that Reed Richards built. That's kind qu- of been... I have a question. Yeah. Do you know what Herbie stands for? I don't. Do you? Did you look it up? No. Maybe that should be a trivia question. question, but I just want to say, I, th- I think we should take a second and make a guess for the sake of comedy. Um, heroes, even r- rebel... Boys, <laughs> I feel like you're right. <laughs> Interceptor Excelsior. Wow, <laughs> that is not what I would have guessed. I don't think the Rebel Boys is right. Um, maybe Reed or Richards. I was gonna say, like, best friend, heroic exoskeleton Reed built in <laughs> uh, yours, existential crisis. Yours is with a so hyphen much on better. existential crisis. <laughs> Like you were, you were viewing the whole acronym. As yeah, there's a line. an arc was, there for me. I was going word by word. Yeah, I don't even remember what I said. Although I feel like the way I uh, guessed that acronym was much more Tony Stark I, than Reed Richards. I concur. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's probably farther off than yours was. Well, maybe it's Herbie. H e r b i e. It stands for H e r b i e. Ah, Tori, do you have a guess? 
I have the answer. Um, oh, do we? wow. We're going to wait then. Oh, wait. Do we wait or do we want it now? Let's let's just do it. Yeah, let's just do it. Because we're not going to get it for... That's a guaranteed miss for a trivia question. Yeah, it's... It has a cop-out. I, I, it's humanoid experimental robot B-type integrated electronics. Uh, the B-type, I feel like, is a real cheat. Yeah. So, like, if it if it was this, the A-type, it'd be... Her I <laughs> her A. <laughs> or if it was the C type, her her C. Yeah, I feel like K. they were like, How can we make this guy's name Herbie? Yeah. Her- <laughs> exactly. Herbie the love bug. All right. Anyways. All right. So he's on there. He's uh he's got some fun winks. I think in the past he's like always he's aware enough that he acknowledges the existence of how cool the Fantastic Four are and wants to be a part of them. <laughs> Even um, in this in this book, yeah. Yeah. Many times. And then we see two characters that Maybe you'll rec- I know for sure our, most of our readers will recognize, but the uh, next to last character standing there is Silver Sable, which a lot of you will recognize from Spider Man comic books. See, I, as soon as I read the name Silver Sable, I was like, I know this person, but yeah. for some reason I attributed it to X Men. And now that I think about it, I think I, I don't think I ever actually read about Silver Sable in any books. Maybe she passed through an animated show or something, mm-hmm. but. I used to, me and my brother used to have Overpower, the Marvel Overpower card game. We never learned how to play. We just collected them yeah. and would be like, mine, lo- mine looks cooler than you. <laughs> and I think so, I, I bet Silver Sable was yeah. in there. I think she's also been around um, the X-Men a good amount and used to be like, would team up with Doom. Tori mm-hmm. might be able to fact check us on some of that. Just It does bit. say former ally of Doom. So. Oh, well, there's some clarification on that. Tori, if you want to chime in at any point on some silver sable background that's fine and then of course this was the coolest little wink for me or not really a wink but just uh inclusion there they have dr strange the sorcerer supreme Mm -hmm. and they specifically say they say in the caption here to keep doom's mystic powers in check which is so cool to just think about than battling Mm -hmm. but also gives so much weight to just how dangerous dr doom is as a sorcerer like yeah he's I think he has been the Sorcerer Supreme at one point. I could be just making that up. That's another thing Tori can check me on <laughs> later. <laughs> um, so basically, by inviting Torrance to here, uh, it just allows us to make all kinds of wild, unsubstantiated claims. Yeah. <laughs> and, and have him call it and on then us. Get and then I have several tabs <laughs> open. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and then we flex and see how uh, how many tabs mm. Tori can keep open on Chrome. <laughs> um yeah, so they're all around here. This is this is definitely not just like a B list or C list of characters that are here to contain uh, Doctor Doom. Like they mm-hmm. they trusted some legitimate people here. Although um, my dinner is ready, if you can hear <laughs> that, it'll stop in just a second. <laughs> um, they are here to transfer him to a prison to await trial um, from the association that we mm-hmm. mentioned earlier. But uh, I kind of liked that he only acknowledges Stephen and Silver. Uh, yeah. Kind of like always a pleasure sort of thing. And uh, they acknowledge him too, but then he kind of quickly quips that like, oh, well, I guess Herbie chimes in and he says in a very robotic voice, on behalf of the Fantastic Four, <laughs> I... And then he gets cut off by Doom and Doom says, are you serious? Reed Richards couldn't even yeah. be bothered. And Strange is like, well, he is cleaning up the mess currently and leading a team mm-hmm. that... uh the after the atrocity you committed uh, pointed there. And then there's this nice moment here where Doom and Strange lock eyes and Doom says, so you really think I did this? Mm-hmm. And it kind of, again, acknowledges why they may not like each other or agree with each other. They do respect each other's power quite a bit, which was just a nice touch, at least I thought. You want to take some of this? Yeah. And, you know, uh, the we have another little comedy moment from Herbie. Calling him Mr. Doom. Oh, and, yeah. And Dr. Strange is like, uh, he's a doctor, by the way. Right. You know, sh- and Herbie's like, should I apologize? And they just go on. Yeah. He does mention, I forgot about that point, that Strange is like, this will just be a lot easier if he doesn't get upset. Yeah. So, like, those little things matter. And while they're talking, like, we, you just have a little bit more of a dialogue between uh, Strange and Doom. Just yeah. talking they're about flying to they're the prison right now, by sorry, the way. Sorry, yeah. yeah. I, it's one of those things. There's a term for it where... You forget that people aren't seeing what you're seeing. Yeah. And have, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm bad about it too. Is that like a Quinjet or something? Or is it? It looks like, I mean, if it's not, it's 
something. It definitely cool. looks like the Quinjet that you see it, in the MCU. It's like the. Uh, it looks like the Avengers jet, okay. actually. Well, it's just like a, a knockoff version. Mm-hmm. Right? So they're just talking about their history, you know, and you can tell that they've. And it, it seems like there's kind of a mutual. I wouldn't say admiration, but you know, they're just like they've been around the block together, and they know, you know, it's it's. Right. It's not. It's it's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, I, mean, I like this little joke. He's. Were you about to get to this? No, go ahead. Okay, he says. Uh, he's Doom says to Strange, "We've been to hell and back, Strange," and, D- and Strange says a few times, "He even tried to leave me there once," mm-hmm. and it was just kind of a funny like yeah. acknowledgement, like, "Yeah, I remember, and it was not pleasant for me." Yeah. And then they're just talking about apparently there's also some strife between Sinar. He, what, how do you pronounce that place? It's that southern country that is right below. Sim, uh, Simcarians. Yeah, know, like Simcaria. Anyway, so, it, but then it, it jumps over to the, <laughs> <laughs> what a name, the War Room of Doom. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you just put of doom at the end of everything? It, does he have the toilet of doom? I think they lean <laughs> into it. Okay, so this is one of those things that they did that for sure on okay, early okay. Jack Kirby, Stan Lee. It was like it. the cloak of doom, the mask of doom, the fist of doom. Like all mm. these things were just you know, the so occasionally ham sandwich of doom. Yeah, occasionally they'll okay. wink at it and kind of play homage okay. to uh, that I mean, sort it, of thing. If there's anything that could be called of doom, I mean a war room, that makes sense, but yeah. it just sounds silly. Yeah, so we're in the War Room of Doom, and Victorious, uh, who is now the regent of Latveria, is there, and they're just, um, you know, passing, you know, just talking about stuff, and I didn't, you know, it seems like basically they're just gabbing on stuff. Mm -hmm. Though really, the only thing that I took from it is that she's carrying out his orders, curious about, you know, what they're going to do about the Simcarian aggression, and then the dude asks her to take off her helmet, her ridiculous helmet, and she's like, would you ever ask that of doom? Then you have your answer. Like, right. I mean, I was just like, hey, that's a bold point. Yeah. I yeah, because nobody would dare no. ask Dr. Doom to take off his mask. I will say, it's kind of a weird looking helmet. Yeah. It looks very Magneto-like. Yeah. But um, I wouldn't ask her to take it off because she could destroy me. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also one of those weird just white dudes trying to make a point and yeah. just make ridiculous requests because he can. So get out of here with that man. Yeah. Quit being white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we uh, jump back into the back of the jet or mm-hmm. whatever. And I don't know, is this is this some Shakespeare or something like that that he's quoting before he maniacally laughs? Ah, this is a perfect Ask Tory question. <laughs> I was a, yeah, I was wondering that when I was reading it. Um, give me a, a okay. couple lines from it. Yeah. Um, my conscience, or sorry, my conscience hath a thousand several tongues, and every tongue brings in a several, a several. T- I can't a read several this. tale. Yeah, I, I mean that it, would it does not roll off if my that, several tongues. If that aligns with any other piece of literature, then yeah, we're already yeah. We I found it. Um, it is Shakespeare. Okay. Um, anyone want to take a guess from which Shakespeare? Uh, R- Richard something. Yeah. Is it Richard the Third? It's Richard the Third. Okay. Yeah, it's only because the last thing is the head of Richard. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not I actually that smart. I was about to say, do you know <laughs> Shakespeare that well? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I do not. Um, do you want to? Do you want me to read that? Like, yeah, just to kind of give some context? I attempted to read it, and it yeah. does not work with my tongue, let well, alone I'll my give several it a swing tongues. and probably butcher it, but uh, I feel like it is a nice little touch here, especially with the reference of it being about Somebody named Richard, knowing that Reed Richards yeah. is his, his enemy. Let me zoom in here so I can actually see what I'm saying. My conscience hath a thousand several tongues, and every tongue brings in a several tale, and every tale condemns me for a villain. Perjury, perjury, in the highest degree. Murder, stern murder, in the duress degree. All several sins, and used in each degree. Throng to the bar, crying all, guilty, guilty. I shall despair, there is no creature loves me, and if I die, no soul will pity me. And wherefore should they, since that I myself find in myself no pity to myself? Methought the souls of all that I had murdered came to my tent, and every one did threat tomorrow's vengeance on the head of Richard. So, obviously, like, I struggle to read that myself, but, like, the fact that he's 
quoting Shakespeare just off the top of his head is impressive to me. (laughs) And then literal, like, I don't know any way to describe the type of laughter that he does in the following panel other than maniacal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We should, uh, I'll throw this up if you're watching on YouTube so you can really get a picture of it. But for those of you who are listening, he's like leaned over the color palette alone, just kind of paints this very cold, blue, lonely, sad scene. And he's, kind of rubbing his hands together while he's mm-hmm. quoting this and he he's in the back of this jet he's on the way to prison he's accused of this high crime of murdering 3,000 people and then he just as Drew said he goes into this maniacal yeah. almost Joker-esque laugh <laughs> yeah. um, it's crazy and then what do you know the very next panel you get this Whoop. scientific poof yeah. I like to describe it. <laughs> this, yeah. Poof. Like a poof where it suddenly appears, but science. Okay. You know? Yeah. And Kang the Conqueror jumps yeah. back in as you, yeah. if you didn't listen to episode one, stop this recording and go listen, or this isn't going to make sense. You know, I, I hadn't actually thought about this until just now. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this the, the section in Doctor Who where, you know, like wh- you're watching it from this point of view of the non time traveler. Yeah. And they're like living their life, and he comes back in and to Doctor Who. It's like the next day. Oh, okay. And you know, but you're seeing. So I was just actually just thinking about it from Kang's point of view. We have no idea how long he's been gone, but obviously it's long enough. He's like, how long? What year is it? You know, it's the next day. Right. But in Kang's life, it could have been a century. Yeah. I don't know. It could have been extremely long time. But um, but yeah, he does pop in, and he immediately asks. He's like, Victor, what year is it? And he tells him, and he says, "I've seen your future." And Doom is like, "What?" And he says, "Years from now, you're the mag- you're the magnanimous leader of an eternally peaceful Earth. Mm-hmm. It would be the most preferable Earth for me to conquer." I like that. Like, at first, you're like, "You're you're the ruler of a peaceful Earth." And I'm like, "How nice is that?" And it'd be way easier for me to conquer that one, dude. Right. You know. Yeah. So. He's like trying to find out. <laughs> like, am I in that timeline right now? And uh, after he s- he interrupts him, he says, you know, it would be way easier for me to conquer. And then Doom stops and he says, free me. Mm-hmm. And King's like, what? And he says, if you want my future, get me the hell out of here. Yeah. And then you see one panel of the jet just flying very normally yeah. towards it. And then another huge explosion. And it's like, that's all the convincing he needed was Doom saying, if you want a shot at that future, yeah. something easier to conquer, break me out of here right now. And then boom, he does it. And then... Suddenly, there's sirens going off, and you know the mayday, mayday, and you know somebody's asking Doctor Strange if he's got a spell for this, and all he can muster is a curse word. (laughs) (laughs) When I first read that, I was thinking Doctor Doom. I I was thinking that this person was asking Doctor Doom to do something, but I was like, oh, well, that makes a lot more sense. Right. And then suddenly, you see outside of the jet, and they're both falling, kind of stuck in each other, and Kang is trying to unlock the cuffs, and uh, he says, "Well, it's this next line." From right. Kang that makes that like in I wanted to learn about Kang, but after reading that, I want to read a Kang comic book. They have some if I he's think. like that. So if you don't mind, I'd like yeah, to go ahead. <laughs> in retrospect, <laughs> I'm just picturing they're falling through the air and he's like, unlock the cuffs. <laughs> he's like, Yeah, keep in mind they are falling out of a yeah. jet right now. In retrospect, we probably should have done that before detonating the jet's rear coils. <laughs> right. I was just right. picturing him like co- talking conversationally. Yeah. And he's like, Kang. And he's just like, boom, all right. And and then he just p- poofs out of there again. He's like, good luck. Yeah. I like this one little wink. This feels like a gesture towards uh, Stan Lee style Kang the Conqueror dialogue. Or really just all comics back then. Like the dialogue he had to kind of passively tell you what was going on. After he says that, you know, in retrospect line, he says, one electrical charge from my gloves and you're free. Yeah, that did you know, feel kind of old school. Yeah, that is not a, a common uh, writing yeah. Uh, technique that is used anymore, like yeah. actually having to say, you know, what's going on here. But yeah, he poofs away and says, good luck. And then we get to see some more powerful sorcery mm-hmm. stuff from Dr. Doom as he creates this force field around him to like brace for the energy of the impact of him falling out. Meanwhile, and, the jet just crashes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, all you see is Dr. Strange saying, get Richards, get help. Yeah. And then we're just in downtown New York. And you can see that Doctor Doom has managed to find some something to, to oh no <laughs> he, he finds a dude yeah and he uh, I'm just gonna hope that he just knocks him out and takes his jacket and his hat yeah and nothing worse but he's just wandering through and then he comes into Times Square and all the all the 
screens pop into one woman's face. And it's like, Victor, it's been a long time, or been a bloody long time. And she's like, don't worry, you're the only one that can see me. And he's like, Morgan Le Fay. And I th- yeah. said, you said you had something you wanted to well, say. Well, first her. off, let's just, have you ever been to Times Square? I Either have. of you? Never no, been okay. to New York. I've been to New York once, and this was in 2013, I think. So it's been a while, but I've been on Times Square. And the thought of every screen on Times mm-hmm. Square turning to one person and then it talking to you is crazy to think about because it is you always see pictures of it or video. Mm-hmm. It is It doesn't do it justice. It's insane just... It's almost overwhelming, like how much is there, um, mm-hmm. in a very cool way. But yeah, um, Morgan Le Fay. I did a little more research to confirm this. She is actually an ex-lover of Doctor Doom, which oh. adds more juiciness to this if you're actually aware of that. Because before then, you're just like, okay, some chick is uh, just talking to him, and maybe maybe it's another hitman or something. Mm-hmm. You're not sure. But um, if you imagine being on the run for such a high crime and then seeing an ex show up on Times Square acknowledging your presence making her think like no don't say that I'm I'm yeah. right here people are gonna find me and then she says don't worry uh, no one else can see you but me yeah. but just to give you a little bit of background there's a reference later about this about her uh, hiding from Merlin she was actually trained by Merlin oh um, I think she has done like some time travel like she's very old or something like that okay. um, she's been around for a long time but she is another sorceress who has some legitimate like magic power and uh, it makes sense that they have crossed paths before uh, not just romantically yeah. but like in several different things Tori did you find anything else on her I saw you looking yeah I was googling her and it, you basically covered a lot of what uh, she's all about um, cool <clears throat> I don't have anything to add really awesome okay. yeah she's just she's definitely not somebody to mess around with she's yeah. a legit character um since we're on it and going to the next panel there's another character who i do know a, more about from breeding um we go into this what looks like a lecture hall mm-hmm. and there's a guy and i immediately recognized him i feel like some comic book readers might not especially if you're new to it but i didn't you didn't okay no. Uh, I first read him in a relatively new comic back in 2015 called The Ultimates. Okay. Um, but that is Blue Marvel, who is up there on that list of super geniuses. Um, his, I'm trying to think of his non-superhero name. Will you look up Blue Marvel? Um, Does it not something say? Something Brashear? Or, yeah, uh, it's Adam Bernard Brashear. Uh, yeah, Adam Brashear. So his power... Um, aside from being a super genius, is he is like a living uh, nuclear reactor. Uh, inter- There's probably a more graceful way to say that, but basically he can like create nuclear energy. Hmm. Um, do you have a have a list of what his powers are, like in abilities? Mm-hmm. What does it say? Uh, genius engineer and physicist, trained in hand-to-hand combat, vast superhuman strength, strength stamina, reflexes, and senses. Nigh invulnerability and durability, flight, energy manipulation, enhanced mental perception, molecular manipulation, light creation, antimatter manipulation, and longevity. Right. Yeah. So he's wow. He's so not talked about, and he very well could be compared to like a Thor or a Hyperion or even like a, yeah. a Superman type level. He's very big deal, very powerful character. Yeah. Um. It, and I don't know about the oldest. Uh, comics that he's in, but I know the more recent stuff, they lean in more into that matter, uh, nuclear energy manipulation and stuff than anything, um, which makes sense of why they would do when they're getting to like black holes and white holes and stuff like that. Um, you wanted to touch on some of this though, some of the stuff you thought was interesting with the black holes. I yeah, think. they're just he, he's in front of a class lecturing. I'm like, I'm just going to read it because that would probably be the easiest and I'll talk about it. It's like, take the ant lion, the artificial black hole. Now, a hole produced through gravitational collapse is finite. However, the ant lion, I know it's probably an ant lion. <laughs> no, it's ant lion now. It was not created that way. What I'm positing is this. Say the ant lion is ant lion is an eternal black hole. That is a Schwarzschild wormhole. Wormhole. This could result in a white hole with massive energy exiting at a different point in time and space. Some theorize that a critical white hole could have exploded with so much force that it created the Big Bang itself. And back whenever I was a youngster, 
I got really into just thinking about black holes and white holes and stuff like that. But I just thought when I read that, I was like, are they saying, are they just planting a seed to say, so this is a weird black hole that we just made. It's mm-hmm. not finite. And if it is connected to a white hole on the other end, something like this could have conceivably started the universe. And, you know, I was just thinking the Earth is so central to the Marvel universe. Right. So maybe that's where they were saying, yeah, why wouldn't Earth ultimately be responsible for the entirety of the in- of the whole universe? Right. And it's pretty central. Coming up with a, raise, a reason to like, scientifically, it checks out. Right. Yeah. And he'd be the person to yeah. stumble across that information. But uh, yeah, he kind of, there's some humorous parts, but just to get through it, he asks if there's any last questions and he looks up and Herbie mm-hmm. is asking, are you the antimatter reactor or the living antimatter reactor they call Blue Marvel? Just kind of this funny, is, like, doesn't understand the uh, the human nature of everything and is, how to actually act in a situation like that. Is Blue Marvel out as the hero, this guy? Yes. Does, okay, yes. so I was just picturing being a guy, a, a student in the class, and all of a sudden realizing yeah. that my professor is a superhero. I'll paint you a picture. You need to read this Ultimates run I'm talking about because it is, I don't know why I've never thought to tell you before. I actually own the floppies. I'll let you borrow them. They're probably in this stack right here. Um Ah, I know what that is. Uh, Anyway, they are in the Ultimates. I'll try to cover this quickly. It is essentially a super Avengers team. They they didn't let anybody on there that was not extremely powerful or extremely smart, which sounds silly to say when you're talking about superheroes because eventually you start reading the list Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of overlap in their powers. But this iteration of the Ultimates was created to solve the biggest possible problems. Avengers level threat is too small of thinking. Mm, Okay. Okay. So the first problem they're trying to solve is the issue of Galactus existing. Okay. That that scope. Like mega universe level stuff. So the team is compromised of Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, T'Challa, Black Panther. Um, Her name, she's in... uh, she has so many names. I'm I, I'm not blanking on her, but I'm trying to think of what her name is in this. It's she's gonna be in WandaVision. She was the little girl in Captain Marvel. Uh, Spectrum might be what she's at right now, but she's like a light manipulating thing, and actually is Captain Marvel, Blue Marvel, and one other person that I'm drawing a blank on right now. But um, it's just to show you the weight, like of how impressive of a character he mm-hmm. is. Like they bring him on, like he made the cut for, okay, universe saving things, not just Avengers level, save the world things. Like that's too small. But anyway, I digress. Yeah. Getting back into Queens now with Dr. Mm-hmm. Strange and his ex Madame yeah. or Morgan Le Fay rather. Yeah. yeah. So doom and her are just sitting there and they're just talking, they're talking about a safe house and, we learn through this conversation that Dr. Doom prefers John Lennon to Paul McCartney. Yeah, that's an important, important. Uh, note to make. <laughs> and I liked it. At one point, Spider-Man just goes zipping by the... the yeah, by the window. Like, she's like, oh yeah, there he goes. I guess he lives around here. He's always rumbling by. And uh, I can't remember exactly what they get at here. Well, they're basically talking about like just his situation he's in. And he's mm. he acknowledges for the first time the out loud the visions that he's yeah. been having. And uh, he says, the, the th- in this future, I'm completely healed. I have children and a wife. I saved the entire world. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically, he asks her if she'd be able to like look in and see, like, is this is this my actual future? Because, mm-hmm. she, again, she's a sorcerer. She has some powers like this. She says, my powers are greatly diminished here, but I could try it. And she looks in to him. She, like, holds her hand up, and this white disc phase thing happens. And... She says somebody that she knows might be able to help better than she can. And she reaches into that disc and she pulls out a doom mask, which is like, okay, where did you get that? And I like this little bit here. Um, Mm -hmm. Where is it at? Oh, yeah. So she pulls it out. She says, this will be helpful. It'll be helpful if you have one of these. And she says, sorry, it's in poor shape. And you can tell it's worn a little bit. It's not like mm-hmm. a brand new match. She says, I have no idea where I just pulled it from. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of like, oh, that's cool. You yeah. have no idea what. So what I'm kind of curious. At. Did she just yoink it 
away from a Doctor Doom of a parallel universe, <laughs> and he's like, "Where did my mask yeah, go?" Yeah, which knowing how he reacts to having his face uncovered yeah. is probably a pretty <laughs> big deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, she says, "Oh, Victor, don't you realize?" Or no, no, no. Sorry, let me back up. She hands him the mask. He says, "Sorry, it's in poor shape. I don't know where I pulled it from." He says, "It's fine. I could use some dignity," which again shows some insight to how he portrays himself or feels mm-hmm. about himself visually. She says, "Oh, Victor, don't you realize?" And she pulls down his mask, and you see, like, for the first time, his really messed up face. It says, it's this that makes you truly interesting. Yeah. And then we kind of just have a quick thing. I'm just going to summarize it real yep. fast. Um, Blue Marvel and Herbie are zipping through, basically saying, hey, we found out this sorcerer, or this sorceress, whatever they call her. Mm-hmm. Uh, Morgan, Morgan Le, Fay. Le Fay is around, so there's a good reason to expect that they're together. So we're going to go track her down, right. and they make some jokes and stuff. Right. And then uh, we are back with Morgan and uh, Doctor Doom, and they're talking about oh the ant lion has gone unstable, and he asked the black hole itself. He's like yeah due to the explosions you know, and before they're able to really talk, uh, you see this shadowy figure and he's like whoa Doom for real. I was like how does it work? And he's like I look into your eyes, and I see how you die. They call me the witness. Yeah and. He's like, okay, look into my eyes and tell me my future. Tell me my death. He's like, what's in it for me? He's like, <laughs> tell me my death or I'll show you yours. And uh, the witness like touches him or looks into his eyes. And he's like, the saddest, saddest day on earth. It's beautiful. So making me think, yeah, people are truly sad to see him go because it's such a beautiful day. So he, he really is loved when he goes. And then he's like, that's preposterous. And he's like, I saw it. He's like, I don't, I don't believe you. There must be some other. And then before he's able to finish, uh, you see, a, 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 I don't know if it's a laser, if they're saying, or if it literally is just going so fast, but yeah. Doom has been shot in the head. Yeah. And you see him, you know, Morgan is holding on to him, Victor, Victor. And there's, do you know who that is? Yeah, that's Taskmaster. Oh, that's right. I, we mm-hmm. learned that in the next one. Yeah. So yeah, Taskmaster has just shot him and he's dying in his own place. So yeah. So yeah, a uh, huge end to that comic. Like so much just happened. I feel like I, mm. I was like really flipping through the pages, like yeah. with some velocity. You know, when mm-hmm. you're like really into a comic when you're moving, like it's a movie in your head. Just to give people some context, the witness is a really, to my knowledge, obscure character to pull from. I think they're just kind of leaning into pulling in some sorcerers and some magic okay. people here. Um, I did some background. I think he not only has. And Tori might have found something that I didn't. He not only has powers of like seeing how people die, but I think he's pseudo like precog. Uh, what's the Tom Cruise movie? The Minority Report. Yeah, Minority Report powers basically like he can see when things are going to happen before they happen, which is not unlike the Inhuman. I forget his name, but who was the main arguing point of Civil War Two? Who had he he didn't quite see them with clarity. He could just see things, and they were reacting on them, and that's what the fight was about, was people reacting to, can you arrest somebody before it happens mm-hmm. or not? Um, but anyway, just some background about him. But then, yeah, um, the guy that shoots Doom here in the head, which seems like probably a pretty fatal thing. Of course, we know nobody actually really dies in comics. Yeah. But uh, Taskmaster, the guy that shoots him, is a legit villain. And also like a mercenary, so it makes sense that somebody of his caliber would be able to bring in Doom and actually take him out. But anyway, mm-hmm. what'd you think of that one? I feel like the yeah. the knob was turned up as yeah. far as the intensity. Definitely. It I mean, I I was enjoying the story after the first one. After the second one I was like, All right, yeah, I'm gonna be reading this for a while. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, we're in for it. Um there's obviously in issue two, uh, you assume that He's not dead, you know. It's yeah. just one of those things. That I mean, if you r- you turn the page and it says next, and you see a demon or a devil or somebody standing over him, surrounded by flames, so you're right. like, "All right, so we're going, we're going under." Yeah, we're going under. And this, for some of our newer uh, members learning about Doctor Doom, is not the first time that mm-hmm. Doom has traveled to the ne- to the underworld. Yeah. Um. Cool. Well. If you don't have any closing thoughts on that, we will take a quick break and then we will jump in to our lightning round of trivia. Yep. Cool. We'll be right back. And we are back with our 
<laughs> I'll just skip this part. And we are back with our lightning round trivia where our questions are faster than King the Conqueror agreed to break Doom out of that Quinjet whenever they were taking him to prison. Yeah. He was like right away. He was like, okay. Yeah, I'll break you out. That's okay. fine. I got places to go, people to see. He didn't even have time to think about getting him out of the cuffs. And he was just like, break out. You would say, break it. out. I'm going to put that music right there. <laughs> in, the, in the last one, you had said you, we weren't sure if Kang could control it or not. Yeah. The fact that he zipped out, he was like, all right, boom, I'm out yeah. of here, makes me think that he has some control. At least control. maybe when he can leave. Maybe Whether not or not, where he's going. when it happens, yeah. Yeah. Or I guess, can you say when he leaves if he is traveling in time? It would still be when. Yeah. yeah. I guess so. But not, he has no but idea. not when he goes. He knows when he leaves, but not when he comes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> so do you want to go first or do you want me to? Uh, yeah, I'll go first while it's okay. fresh in my head. I mentioned earlier, this is uh, relevant just because I mentioned it, but the Ultimates in that run. Um, well, hold on. This is kind of spoilery, and I want you to read it. So I wonder if this should be my it's question. Fine. It's fine. Okay. It's not... It's not spoilery beyond the first issue, I think. Um, I mentioned a giant threat level thing being Galactus um, and that they were going to be tackling the issue of Galactus. And for those that don't know, Galactus is a world eater. He has to eat planets to survive and to live. It is his kind of his curse and his burden. Like he doesn't he doesn't uh, do it for any reason of evil. It's just purely out of necessity for him to stay alive. And it, it's kind of a, in a weird way, it is a Thanos bring balance thing. Like mm-hmm. he kind of okay. keeps people dying in a sense. Um, but it is a problem, you know, because he's tried to eat Earth several times and a bunch of other things. Can you give me, uh, you're not going to get this, but can you <laughs> give me a guess of how they plan and possibly succeed in stopping Galactus, the world eater, without killing him. Do they use the Infinity Gauntlet? I can't remember, but I'm looking for something more specific. Like, let's just assume that maybe they do, but what would they do with it? Like, what do you like? They're not killing him. So they, what would you use the gauntlet to make him do? I can't remember if they specifically use it. It's possible. I don't know. I mean, I, if I sat here and wasted a lot of people's time with me thinking, <laughs> I could come up with something better. Yeah. But I'm just going to say, give him amnesia. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very old comic book answer. Yeah. No, that's not correct. Okay. They just give you his new name afterwards. They turn him into Galactus, the world bringer. So instead of taking life, he gives it. He like starts oh. creating worlds and giving energy back to dead planets. Interesting. So they turn him they, into this from this destructive force into something that is rejuvenating these dead planets and life. They stop, yeah. reverse it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and he yeah put <laughs> that thing down, flip it, and reverse it. Yeah. Wonder how much I could get away with putting that sound clip before we got taken off YouTube. I think it's six. Seconds, I've always right? heard six seconds. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna. Possibly push that this episode. <laughs> work it, let me work it. I put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really cool too. The panel where you get the revelation of what they're doing. Like it's not just a a mindset change, but he looks different. Mm-hmm. And like a yeah. like imagine Galactus in a light. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, anyway, sorry for the hard one. That's fine. Yeah. Well, that's what she's in. <laughs> <laughs> All over the place today. Um, so I'm going off book. Off comic book. Oh snap! Uh, comic book club, man. Come I don't. On. I don't know. I mean, we were talking about black holes mm-hmm. and white holes. Yeah. So and you're going straight Schwartz up. Schwarzschild wormholes. Yeah. I was just curious. Basics. Can you? Do you know the other um, name, more uh, fancy, attributable to somebody? Uh, name for a wormhole. Or someone's. I have a guess, and I feel like it's not a terrible guess, but I'm also sure that it's not close enough to be right. Is it called like a a Newton Eisen something bringer <laughs> hole? <laughs> you had two syllables. Okay, it's you know I'm happy with. Well, that. actually, no, no. A something Eisenbridge. 
Newton you're closer. I, you're closer. Yeah, I. I, I you got I the bridge. You got that. the eye. Yeah. Tell me. Do you know? Mm-hmm. I do not. The Einstein Rosen Bridge. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. I only knew that because they mention it in Thor. Okay. Um, yeah, they do. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I, I just was I say thinking knew about it, it in the sense that I got a couple syllables right in the word bridge. I was just thinking because <laughs> they were saying a Schwarzschild wormhole. And right. if a wormhole is an Einstein Rosen bridge, it'd be really fun to say a Schwarzschild Einstein Rosen bridge. It's just a lot of words. Yeah. Well, no points again for us. We're, we have more to go, but I yeah, guess that's uh, fine. Do you do have, you, did you come up with anything? I have a possible one. Yeah. Um, Dr. Doom has four notable aliases. Can you name any of them? Notable? Drew. Buzzing in. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me think One about this. One of them has, uh, has actually come up in this I was thinking recording process. Yeah, I think I know. Hmm. Or I'm guessing. Notable aliases. Okay. I, Alex, have a guess. <laughs> um... I have two guesses, but I'm going to stick with one as an answer. Is it Iron Man? Yeah, I'll give it to you. It's listed as Infamous Iron right. Man. Right. Okay, yeah. That was the name of the comic that he was on. Okay, so he was Infamous Iron Man. I was going to also just be lame and say uh, Victor Von Doom. Hey, that was going to be my guess. <laughs> Are you calling me lame? Yeah. Oh, that was my cool. guess. Awesome. That's another one we need to co- cover when he's Infamous Iron Man. It's Because uh, it's Iron Man, but he has like a cloak. Like it, It's kind of a hybrid of their... Their uniforms or their outfits, costumes, suits. <laughs> the other, uh, the other three were King Boss, okay, Doombot, and Rabum Alal. Oh, I remember that. Uh, that might have something to do with him becoming one of the Herald of Apocalypse, oh, okay. oh. um, with an X Men kind of thing. Mm. I can't remember. I could be making that up. Uh, cool. Well, any other thoughts on issue two of Doctor Doom? Just that we are killing this trivia. Yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> really good at trivia. Just like always. We always said that it was more for people to learn than anything, and for people to laugh at our how much, how, just how much we don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really hard to strike a balance of like that's too freaking hard, mm-hmm. or here's yeah. a freebie. What is Iron Man's name? Yeah, you know, like <laughs> that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Well, Drew, where can they find you on social media? You can find me at Drew Morris Comp on Twitter, Drew Morris Composer elsewhere, or on my website, DrewMorrisMusic.com. Cool. What about you, Alex? You can find me at Alex Wayne Miller on all social media websites. Wayne is W-A-Y-N-E, just like Bruce Wayne, because I am Batman, as always. Tori, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Torrance Watkins, T-O-R-R-A-N-C-E Watkins. Um... I'm not on there just a whole lot, but I'm doom scrolling anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's appropriate, Ryan. Doom. Right. Doctor yeah. Doom scrolling. Oh, nice. nice name <laughs> drop. And Drew, where can they find uh, the two man accounts? We are on Twitter at Two Man Comic Book with the number two. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Two Man Comic Book Club with the number two. You can find us on YouTube if you're listening in podcast form. You can find us in podcast form if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, just look for Two Man Comic Book Club. And. We also have a blog where we post these things with occasional non-podcast or video-related content. That's twomancomicbookclub.blogspot.com. Cool. Well, if you guys don't have anything else, we will see you next time with issue three of Doctor Doom. We're going to keep this one going. We're kind of into it. Yeah. Until then, we'll see you guys later. Bye.